Uh, welcome back. I hope your weekend was wonderful. Uh, no rain. Uh, short lecture here on A to D converter. Now that you're into the meat of lab nine, I just thought I'd give you some theory associated with the A to D converter uh, process. Uh, this stuff is in the book, chapter five, uh, chapter eight. Okay. Uh, you know what an A to D converter is. Uh, basically, it's presented with an analog input, and then it generates a digital output for us. Uh, I'd like to present three A to D converters. Uh, and not that you're really going to be able to build them uh, after this short lecture, but you should at least know what the terms mean and how we choose them. So I'm going to focus on the high level aspects of three converters, uh, which are prevalent. All three of them, all three of these techniques are prevalent in the workplace. Um, and the first is called sigma delta. Uh, it probably should be called delta sigma because the delta part comes first. There it is right there. Uh, and basically uh, what we have is the unknown here. Okay, There's an unknown. That's the presented analog input with a sample and hold on the front end and we want to know what voltage that is. And then we have a known value here. Okay. And we'll see this technique in the, in the success of approximation. But in this technique, what we have is unknown and known. But what, the thing about the known is what we know is its duty cycle. Okay. And so the known value is, uh, is a square wave. And if you look at V naught right here, okay. This is a, uh, an analog signal, but it presents itself in a very interesting digital fashion, and that is the information is encoded in the pulse width, okay? or the duty cycle of this waveform. Uh, we can drill down and look at, uh, look at this part right here, and if I said, hey, class, build me a one-bit DAC, okay? such that the input was 0 or 3.3 .3 volts, and the output was 0 and 3.3 .3 volts, you'd go, hey, John, you're silly. Okay? A one-bit DAC is a wire. Okay? This is how, this is why this works. There's no expensive components in here. Okay? Um, and so what we have here is in the, in the algorithm of sigma delta is this signal called DAC which is essentially V naught, but what we're going to adjust is the duty cycle or the, or the pulse width um, of this wave. And then we're going to compare the unknown to the known. And we're going to see which one's bigger. Now, in this system, the, the comparison is actually done on an average. In other words, what is the average difference of the input here and the average of the known v naught. Okay, so it's going to compare these two averages. And then using a feedback loop, okay, it's going to drive the average of, of the difference to zero. Okay, and that is the, if you look at v uh, V2, that is exactly what this is. V2 is the average difference between the known and the unknown. And when I drive that average difference to zero, okay, so V2 is driven to zero on average, okay? If, if the average of V2 is equal to Vn, what can you tell me about the pulse width or the duty cycle of V0? Turns out that is a measure of the unknown input. Okay. So uh, the essence of a sigma delta. Now, this sigma delta alg algorithm isn't a real one. It turns out all these sigma delta algorithms are proprietary secrets amongst the manufacturers. So I made one up. Okay, I made one up. Uh, but it illustrates, it actually runs, but it's really, really crappy. No one would ever use it. Um, but it illustrates uh, a fundamental, uh, pr uh, the fundamental principles of sigma delta. And that is this loop time here 
this loop time okay, is faster than the sampling rate. It's called oversampled. Okay. In other words, this, okay, I have another bar here. Now I'm going to ask you another question. I want you to build me a one bit A to D. Just to show you how easy this is. A one bit A to D. Right? Where this is the input and that's the output. Right? That's the simple uh, threshold detector that we did last week. Okay? So it's got an easy DAC, it's got an easy A to D. And this loop, uh, for in, order, for in order for this 10 bit uh, DAC to work, this loop is actually has to occur 1,024 times FS. Uh, and that's why this particular embodiment is not very good. Um, but they are all oversampled. They all have what's called an integrator right here. Okay. This is the integrator, the sigma part. It has an integration step. Integration is another, norm, another term for average, right? That's just what we got here. So it's averaged over time, and it will drive the average of V2, which is the difference between the input and the known, it'll drive that to zero. Uh, suffice it to say, uh, that's essence how it works. Okay, so there's a couple of terms built in here that you should know. The first is oversampled. Okay, what is okay? Question. Sure, go. Yeah, so is that loop actually in software? Or is oh, it's both software. He said, is this hardware or software? And the answer is both. This is a, uh, it turns out all A to D converters and all digital to analog converters are what's called mixed signal. Okay, a mixed signal device is a integrated circuit with both digital circuits and analog circuits. And the nature of a DAC and the nature of an ADC is such that you have to have digital circuits and analog circuits. So what's in the box is digital. And what the, uh, what's over here on the left are the analogs. And the, and the line is right here, right? That's the line between the digital circuits and analog circuits. So the loop includes both the digital and analog. Does that any answer your question? I mean, like, is that, is there actually, like, a processor running that? Oh, no, 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 no. He said, is there a processor code? Again, remember, I'm a computer scientist, so I think of everything in terms of C code, okay? Uh, the thing on the, on the, the box on the right is digital hardware. That's 316. Okay, that's 316, or more precisely, 460R. Okay, anybody in 460R taking it? This is all implemented digital logic. I mean, digital transistor logic. This box right here. Okay. Or if you anybody done this in uh, 460M, right? You could do that in 460M. Okay, so this is not the processor running C code. This is a computer scientist trying to explain to software-minded folks, because I know you guys love your software, uh, what's happening over there. And it's basically a feedback loop which is going to drive the output high or low depending upon whether the input's too high or too low, which is going to drive the uh, pulse width to match the, um, the average of, of V of V naught is going to go to Vn. Okay, so the first principle you want to learn here is it's oversampled. In other words, this A to D has another A to D in it, right? It's sort of, it's not recursive because this A to D is simple. And this A to D is sampled faster than the ultimate sampling rate. Okay, that's what oversampling is, okay? With some digital logic to figure this out. The second is it has an integration step. Okay, so this is an integral part, okay? and it also has a difference part or a delta part. Okay, so that's the essences of, of a sigma delta converter, but now I want to use it. Why it's important is when we're interested in resolution and not accuracy. Okay? These are the, in other words, I want a 16-bit converter, and I'm just interested in the shape of things. I'm not measuring temperature where I'm interested in getting it right the same time every day. Uh, I'm interested in the, 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 the shape of waveforms. And so the sigma delta is the audio, is the audio DAC. Okay, so this is what's used in high precision audio, audio, process, audio input, sigma delta. All right, let's do the, this is the one we saw this in 319K. So this is a 319K review. Okay, uh, it also has a, 
has the same sort of shape as the sigma delta, if you think about it. You see that? It's got analog parts, and it's got digital parts, okay? And it's got, uh, and, and, and if you, before you ask me, this is not C code that the processor's running. This is digital hardware that's running doing this algorithm, okay? And um, uh, those of you that were in my um, 319K class have played this game before, okay? So this is me, and that is you. You get to be the DAC. And then we'll have some sort of arbiter that will tell you whether you're high or low. Okay? And so I've guessed a number. What is it? Oh, a number between 0 and 255. I'm in, this is a, and you have an 8-bit DAC. Okay? Right there. So what number would you like to choose? And the answer is going to be, is it high or low? 128, that's correct. That's the right first guess. Okay? It's going to guess 128. Uh, can you tell me why you guessed 128? Because then you can have a binary search. Yeah, it's going to be a binary search. You divided the search space in half. Okay? And I'm telling you that 128 is too high. In other words, I told you it was between 0 and 127. All right? That's okay. Now what? Yeah, you know, anybody see what the next choice is? 64. I don't want to, I go pretty far. I'll go high faster. All right, all right, uh, I'm going to need more space. Next. You already guessed. What's next, next one? 32, one more easy one. It's too high. No, 32 is too low. Sorry, I, I, I forgot what my, my, my word was. No change in the mind. That's why I have a sample and hold, by the way. <laughs> the sample and hold latches it in. So while we're playing this game, can't change your mind. Okay? So it's low or same. Okay? So in other words, it's between 32 and 63. All right, next. 48. 48. Okay, black. It's too high. Next. Okay, right? It's between it's between thirty-two and forty-seven. <coughs> Somebody say forty. It's too low or same. Right? It might be now we're close. We know it's between forty and forty-seven. So what are you gonna guess next? Forty-four is too high. What are you gonna guess next? Forty-two is too low. What are you going to guess next? 43 is too high. So what is it? It was 42, okay? But those of you that know the, how this game works, if, if you encode a high as a zero and a low as a one, okay, the, you'll get the answer, 42. Okay, so the essence of the su success of approximation, it is got a clock, right? We saw that last time when we talked about the fact that the ADD converter has a 16 megahertz clock, which means I'm guessing 16 million times per second, and I have to make 12 guesses. The advantage of this is the... Um, if I go to 13 bits, I got to guess 13 times. I go to if I double the number, the number of alternatives, I only add one more more guess. Okay. Uh, but the difficulty is, is I need a DAC with the same precision as my A to D. Uh, but this is called successive approximation, and it's used when what's important is I'm interested in accuracy. Okay, so we're going to use this whenever we're measuring something that has DC in it. Okay? And it is fairly slow as a scheme of things. And I'm going to call 1 million samples per second slow. Okay? That's a slow converter. All right, let's play another game. All right. 1, 2, 3. Okay. 0, 1, 2. I'm giving everybody a number. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, oh, year, uh, 28, 29, 30, you're in the next row, no, 30, 31, okay, 32, 33, 34, okay, I stopped. 32, you guys in the back row don't get to play, okay? <laughs> I've just uh, guessed another, uh, we're gonna make a five bit deck, okay? And the number is between zero and 31, okay? So if you were 32 or 33, okay, now we're gonna play the same game, right? There's me, and there's you, you all, a Texas style, right? Right? Okay, so, and a count of three, you're all gonna guess. Right? At once. This is gonna be fast, right? This is Texas, we're gonna go fast. Okay? Okay? Right? You wanna so call out your number when I get to three, right? When I get to right after three, right? One, two, three. Okay, so but the cool part is I've got thirty-two ears. Right? And I heard you all at once, because I got you know Superman powers, right? And the answer is uh, Low, 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 high, 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 Okay. This is what's built in your digital scopes, right? So if you want to go at one gigahertz or five gigahertz, you want to sample really, really fast, you got to do things in parallel. But if you, it only took 32 of you to play this game. If I had a 10-bit converter, it'd only take 1,000 of you. We'd have to go to a bigger auditorium, but we could still play this game. You see this? It's it scales in cost, but not in speed. Okay? This, this game of, uh, it's called a flash. The way it looks like, and again, it's not software. It's all hardware now. There's virtually no software in this whole scheme here. Okay. All right, so uh, for if you have n bit converter, we're going to have two to the n resistors. Uh, together with a precision voltage source, so, and again, 1,024 resistors isn't horrible. You know, you got a lab partner. They can solder them down, so you can be in an integrated circuit. And it's going to take two to the n comparators, right? We had, we had 32, a 5-bit thing, it took 32 of you. You were the comparators, or you, you were the guessers. And 32 answers, and now I'm going to need a two to the n to n bit digital uh, demultiplexer. And again, it's, that's digital logic. It's not that complicated because you could see that the answers were one of these, right? One of these types of, uh, of, of formats. And you could see exactly where it was associated, my, what my input was uh, fairly quickly. Okay, so again, I'm going to need a, you know, if this were an eight, if this were a 10 bit converter, I'm going to need 1,024 of these, 1,024 of these, and 1,024 to 10 bit digital circuit. Not hard, not hard, but very fast. All right, so we use a DAC when it's very fast. Okay, uh, these are the example codes. Obviously, you're doing Lab 9, you probably already found them. Jitter. Okay, I want to say one last thing in this lecture, and that has to do with jitter. Um, and the idea of jitter is if this is a waveform, okay, and this is the time that I was expecting to sample, right, these are the expected times, and they're separated by delta T, which is 1 over Fs, and then I introduce a time jitter, okay, and this jitter may be early or late, um, the consequence of a jitter is the fact that I'm going to get a voltage error, which is a function of the slew rate 
of my input times that time jitter. Okay. So this equation is on the test. This is the consequence of sampling jitter. Now in 319K, uh, where we had a timer interrupt and did a software start to the A to D converter and read the A to D result and put it in a FIFO or whatever, in 319K we had that software model and anything that delayed this interrupt service routine will cause a jitter. Now it's a forward jitter, okay, which actually makes the other sample look early, but nevertheless uh, there was a jitter associated with the priority of the interrupt, the instruction that was being executed, your stupid lab partner who thought, oh I got a critical section, <laughs> I'm so sad. So what does he do? What does she do? She disables interrupts and then your sample gets delayed and your voltage is wrong, right? Because rather than sampling it here, it sampled it there, right? So the consequence of a delayed sample is a wrong answer to the voltage, which is a function of the jitter and the slew rate of the system. Uh, but I've got a program for you if you're willing to uh, buy it. And that was this one right here, okay? And as we saw last time, the timer zero can't be stopped by your lab partner. Disabling interrupts, now they can uh, hit the, you know, hit the break point in the debugger, but they can't stop this timer. And so this timer is going to trigger the A to D converter. And the A to D converter runs when it's done, and it doesn't matter when it runs, as long as it runs before it's time to get another one. So as long as the a interrupt service routine occurs in this window till it's time to do another, there's virtually no jitter to this part to this. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, so in summary, uh, you should be aware in general of what these are for. Which one is for fast? Flash, you know, like the superhero, right? Uh, which one is the highest precision? You want 20 bits? Success. No, 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 not precision. Alternatives. Sigma delta. It's got the biggest number of bits for the dollars. And which one's most accurate? The sigma delta is most accurate. All right.